Tonight we are continuing with our study of the chart that we started a few weeks ago. And uh, if you recall, last week we spoke about uh, the fall of man. Very ext extensively we spoke about the fall of man. We talked about concepts like the spirit, the soul, and the body. That man is a tripartite uh, creation. Uh, unlike uh, what uh, some people may want to say that man is just spirit and body or soul and body. We are spirit, soul, and body. And therefore, each part uh, play a very important role in our relationship to God and God's plans and purposes. So, tonight I just want to end this topic by just saying one more important thing and then move on to uh, chapter 4, 5, and 6, where we will see the results of this fall in a more historic way. So, uh, the thing that I want to talk to you about tonight is the concept of man having three elements. If you look at your charts, you will see that God had something in mind called the spiritual man, a man that could contain God's image, which said that Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 is the key verse that says, let us create man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion. So God is after a humanity that contains his image and ultimately his likeness. What is the image of man? Well, uh, image of God, we said uh, a spiritual man, a man who's governed by the spirit, not by the soul. Man was created to be governed by the powers and by whatever God put in the spirit of man. And yet man, when he fell, he no longer had the capacity to use his spirit in relation to God in order to understand God's mind and purpose. If man had stayed a spiritual man, he would have been governed by spiritual senses and he would be open to God and he would fulfill God's purpose and therefore this is the kind of ma mankind that God is after he was always after he will always be after that and we see the first of this humanity in the person of Jesus Christ the first time ever after Adam when a human being appeared on this planet who was totally in the image of God is Jesus Christ. So what is it about this spiritual man that is really the outstanding characteristics? Here we see man according to God's mind having his image is having three very important elements and I want to talk about these elements here. First of all man had what we call a prophetic a prophetic faculty man had a prophetic faculty now the word prophetic sometimes we misuse this in the recent times we think prophetic is somebody who's called a prophet and they stand and say well thus says the Lord that is not really the, 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 the definition of the word that's not really what the Bible has in mind the word prophet or prophetic means someone who has the ability to understand God's mind he can hear and understand God's mind. Adam, when he was created, he had a prophetic ability. In other words, when God spoke to him, he understood what God is saying. And he was able to convey the mind of God, perhaps to his wife. So man's element of prophetic ability was placed in man so that man and God would be able to communicate with each other. So as God speaks, man is able to understand it. The other thing that it's important that man had a priestly element in him. A priestly element. Now the word priest, again, is a misused word because we think priest is somebody who wears a special gown or a special clothing. Even in the Protestant side, you know, you wear a special color or things like that. We think priests are special people. When God created Adam, he put in Adam the priestly ability. And what is a priestly ability? The priestly ability is the ability of man to make God satisfied, to satisfy God. So if Adam was able to live a life that would satisfy God's heart, he would have a priestly faculty. So the priestly faculty refers to the ability to satisfy God's heart. God was satisfied because Adam was living in a relationship that God's heart was pleased. 
and therefore man had a priestly ability. Now, in the Old Testament, you see that there were priests in the tabernacle. There were priests in the temple. Now, what was the job of a priest? It was not just to go and do ceremonies. All these ceremonies were referring to the desire of man to please God, to make God happy, to bring God's pleasure. So you offer sacrifices, you burn incense, you do all these things. All of them were designed to bring pleasure to God's heart. So who is a priest? A priest is a person who is able to please God. That is the definition of a priest. Not somebody who does certain things and we all say, wow, this is a very holy man. And the last thing, God had placed in man the kingly abilities. In other words, man would be able to rule and govern. These were the three things that God had placed in man. Every one of these corresponded to something in God. It's just like parallels. The pro prophetic element in man corresponds to God's mind. So in order for a man to understand God's mind, man must have a prophetic ability. The priest priestly ability corresponds to God's heart. In order for man to be able to satisfy God, they have to act as a priest. In order to satisfy God's heart, man must have a priestly ability. And finally, God's will. In order for man to be able to fulfill God's will, man must have a kingly ability, to ability to govern. So all of these were placed in Adam. So Adam was able to understand God's mind. Adam was able to please God. And Adam was able to do God's will. This is where the image is. This is how the perfect image is. A man who has God's mind, a man who has God's heart, and a man who fulfills God's will. Now, if you look at any human being in history, after Adam, the question is always comes, was there ever a man who perfectly understood God's mind, who perfectly pleased God's heart, who perfectly fulfilled God's will? That will immediately write off all human beings, because there's absolutely not one single human being after the fall of man who was able to perfectly, 100%, do any of these and have any of these and therefore man was always short. The only person that ever did this was Jesus Christ. That's why he is the perfect spiritual man, our prototype, our example that we should be in his image because he is the image of the invisible God. Now <clears throat> when man fell he lost these abilities. That's the whole lesson. When Adam and Eve fell they lost these abilities. In which order did they lose it? That is very interesting. In which order did they lose this? The first uh, thing that they lost was their ability to rule. 